I believe everyone remembers the McDonald's Monopoly game. Buying meals can get a sticker for the lottery. The prizes range from dining discounts to cruise trips. This activity even involved a fraud of the century, which amounted to 24 million US dollars in 12 years, which alerted the FBI to investigate. In 1987, McDonald's performance was not satisfactory. They asked a subcontracting company, Simon Marketing, for help. Happy Meal, which is still very popular with children, was also proposed by Simon Marketing. This time, it is proposed that McDonald's cooperate with Monopoly. However, the content of the event has nothing to do with Monopoly, mainly on the fries box, Coke cup, and some cooperative magazines with McDonald's game pieces. These game pieces can be exchanged for burgers, Cokes, even sports cars, and a $1 million cash prize. The event was very popular as it was launched. While diners enjoy collecting game pieces, McDonald's also relies on event-earned fame and money. Since its launch in 1987, McDonald's has continued to hold it every year. Until 13 years after the event was launched, a shocking fraud case related to the event was revealed. One day in 2000, the FBI received an anonymous tip that the McDonald's Monopoly game involved cheating. The three recent 1 million winners are all from the same family, and many of the winners are cheating. Behind the scenes is a man known as Uncle Jerry. The FBI soon launched an investigation called Operation Final Answer. However, they don't know where to start, because there is a high chance that this kind of fraud involves an insider. After discussions, the FBI decided to contact the McDonald's security chief to inform him that there might be organized fraud in the game event. McDonald's was planning to launch the next round of events, FBI could use this opportunity to find the culprit. As soon as the new event was launched, the first person to receive $1 million, Michael Hoover, appeared. The FBI pretended to be an advertising agency and invited Michael to shoot a video for McDonald's. Hoover told the camera crew his tale of finding his $1 million token in the second of two People magazines he had bought one day when he went to the beach. The first magazine fell into the sea, he said, so he bought another copy from a grocery store on the way home, and he became a millionaire. FBI agents listened in on a phone call after the bogus interview, during which Hoover boasted to one of his accomplices how the camera crew bought every word of his story. Uncle Jerry was also mentioned many times. Later, the FBI used a similar method to investigate all the grand prize winners and found that they all contacted the same phone number when they won and received the prize. He is Jacobson. Jacobson was a former police officer who was wounded in action and retired. Through the introduction of his wife, he worked for a printing company, Dittler Brothers. The Dittler Brothers are known for their tight security, and cooperative products include US stamps and lottery tickets. This time McDonald's game pieces are also in charge of the Dittler Brothers. As a retired policeman, Jacobson works as a security guard in a printing company. He happens to be the security guard responsible for the printing of game pieces. People who know Jacobson will give him high praise. Simon Marketing soon noticed Jacobson's serious and careful work attitude and hired him as a security supervisor with a high salary, and is solely responsible for the security of McDonald's events. After Jacobson became the security supervisor, he set very strict rules. He would return to the factory at 5 in the morning to inspect. All the high-value game pieces were handled by himself. To prevent someone from cheating, all the high-value game pieces have some deliberate flaws, plus a watermark. Then they are kept in a safe that can only be opened by two people entering the password at the same time. When packaging the high-value game pieces required by the production factory, Jacobson will put the game pieces in an envelope and seal them with a security seal. Jacobson took the game pieces to the factory by plane, and then randomly placed them. An independent third party will monitor Jacobson throughout the process. I believe everyone guessed that Jacobson is the mastermind of the fraud, Uncle Jerry. But the security throughout the process is so tight, how did Jacobson cheat? It turned out that the independent third party who monitored Jacobson was a woman. Every time Jacobson delivered game pieces, he would go to the bathroom and replace the high-value game pieces in the envelope with ordinary game pieces. The supplier of seals for envelopes accidentally provided Jacobson with additional seals, so it was possible to pretend the envelopes were still sealed. Jacobson was very careful after getting the game pieces. He gave the $25,000 game piece he got for the first time to his stepbrother because he has a different surname from his stepbrother. It turned out that Jacobson was right, and between 1989 and 1995, Jacobson sold stolen game pieces to family members or others he knew including selling a $10,000 game piece to a neighbor for $2,000, selling a $200,000 game piece to a nephew for $45,000. Until 1995, Jacobson met Gennaro Colombo, an Italian mafia who ran illegal nightclubs and casinos. 
Jacobson and Colombo met at the airport in Atlanta, and Jacobson gave Colombo a sports car game piece. Colombo has appeared in a McDonald's commercial as a winner holding a prop car key. It's just that Colombo opted for cash because it's hard for his size to get into a sports car. After Jacobson and Colombo started a cooperation plan, Jacobson sold the high-value game pieces to Colombo at the price of $50,000 each. Colombo then sold the game pieces to others at half price. He also took care of his relatives and friends and gave his father-in-law a game piece worth $1 million. Most of the buyers are Italian men living on the East Coast. Colombo's wife, who didn't participate, found something wrong. She told Colombo that if he didn't want to be discovered, he should let some women and people from other countries win the lottery. She introduced her friends to participate. Jacobson and Colombo's plan was perfect until the unexpected happened in the third year of their partnership. One day in 1998, Colombo had an accident while driving with his wife and young son. The youngest son was only slightly injured, and his wife recovered quickly from the car accident. Only Colombo was seriously injured and passed away two weeks later. Probably in memory of his partner's death, Jacobson anonymously sent a $1 million game piece to a children's hospital. After the grief, Jacobson has more important tasks to find new partners. This time Jacobson found a few partners and continued to sell game pieces, if not anonymously reported, or Jacobson is still cheating now. The FBI monitored more than 20,000 phone calls to identify Uncle Jerry. Jacobson was finally arrested on August 22, 2001 and sentenced to three years in prison and $12.5 million in restitution to McDonald's. This ended the 12-year amount fraud worth $24 million. Colombo's wife was also sentenced to 18 months in prison, and McDonald's terminated the contract with Simon Marketing early because of the case. As a result, the two sides sued each other, and McDonald's agreed to pay Simon Marketing $16.6 million in compensation. Simon Marketing lost a $5 million annual contract with McDonald's, and it went out of business in the year the case came to light. Then another 1,000 Burger King franchisees filed a collective lawsuit against McDonald's for false advertising and unfair publicity. Since most of the high-value game pieces have been stolen in 12 years, customers are very angry that there is no chance to win. To quell the incident, McDonald's has launched a special event of $25 million US dollars. This case originally caused a sensation in the United States, but the unfortunate 9-11 incident occurred on the second day of the court trial, so it was forgotten by many people. As for who is the anonymous whistleblower? Colombo's parents told the FBI out of revenge for not letting their children visit Colombo's parents, Colombo's wife said. Here is Monopony, welcome to like, comment and subscribe. See you next episode.